Good evening, ladies and gents. I figured I would talk to you guys and put make out another video again tonight. Uh, this rifle here, I, I don't think I've put out a video about this one. Uh, this is probably my longest owned AKM in quite some time. I think I've had this rifle now for at least three years, at least. Uh, it's a Romanian SAR-1. Uh, I will be rolling in several different footage, or photos of its different iterations from when I bought it used uh, to basically now. It's, like I said, it's been through several different iterations of tactical-ed out when I first bought it with all plastic mis mismatched, misfitting handguards and, and a collapsible buttstock to what you see before you now. Uh, and I think I went through a phase where I had an Ultimac with a red dot that I think if you guys have been watching the channel long enough can realize I'm not too good with red dots without my glasses. Uh, that being said, the uh, I like I said, I bought this thing used uh, from the original owner. He said he had had it for at least 10 years. Uh, it's a 2000 model production. The furniture on it is not original. I don't remember where this furniture came from or who I got it from, uh, but it does look neat, neat on the rifle. I've changed out several parts on this gun. It's went from the factory Romanian trigger to a Tapco or a modified Tapco to uh, now it's an AKT, ALG AKT EL. It's on its second bolt carrier. Uh, the first one, I started having issues with it binding in the rifle when I had a Ultimac rail on it. And one of the issues with it, the Ultimac was straight on the gun, but the actual piston in the bolt carrier was screwed all the way in. So there was no play in it. So it's, it wasn't that it was binding a whole heck of a lot, but you could definitely feel the bolt slow down when the piston entered the gas block because it was pushed one way or another. Anyway, I picked up another Romanian bolt carrier and I haven't had anything, any issues since. Um, the other bolt carrier, I know I've spoken in one of my previous videos that I would be getting a KNS gas piston. That KNS gas piston will be going on that bolt carrier. Uh, it's a semi-auto cut bolt carrier. Uh, that being said, it, this has the original bolt in it. It's still running strong, still in headspace. Uh, the only things internally, other than the aftermarket trigger group that, that I've changed, uh, I've replaced the, the recoil spring because I didn't know how, how many rounds this gun has had through it. The bore rifling, and all, it still passes the bullet test, all that sort of stuff. The rifling is still strong, it's very clear, but the recoil spring seemed a bit soft. Now, you can run these rifles forever and probably never change the recoil spring, but the rifle will not last as long. Uh, another thing that I've changed out is the trigger pins. The issue that I noticed with the trigger pins was a lot of movement and I started to diagnose it by symptom. Uh, first I ordered a, a, a new trigger plate from Rifle Dynamics. Uh, theirs is a single piece design. It's not cut like the Krebs custom uh, pin retainer and has less play in it. That's not a dog on, on Krebs because that's a a very widely used retainer plate but it seems to be better with this pattern of AK. Um, then it still had that issue where, where there was a lot of movement in the trigger pins. They're not wallowed out and I came to realize that when I took my spare Polish fire control group pin that would have been for basically the auto sear um, and swapped it 
with one of these or one of the one of the original ones on the rifle and it seemed to clear up the issue after changing the retainer plate with that specific pin uh, that being said I wanted to get new pins I ordered the extended ones from AK builder uh, that they're basically cut to fit I left them alone because they don't impede function on the rifle um, so and and a marked improvement since in inputting that retainer plate from rifle dynamics uh, basically it's they had a, an original version that wasn't I guess you would I want to say the word is scalloped uh, it's they long story short they've they've cut out pieces of it so that it works with different rivet patterns um, but anyway I know the one in my 74 is different than the one in my Polish build that Jim did and the one that I ordered for this rifle um, but anyway mark improvement in the way the pins were held in these are, are tight and they don't move uh, very snug uh, that being said on this rifle I've been using Yugoslavian bolt hole open mags I don't care whether I have them or not uh, I'll use standard mags I'll use regular mags and I don't care um, whether it has bolt hole open or not I'm not a stickler for either one uh, that being said I have a lot more of these mags than I do the standard Romanian Polish any I have more of these like I said than your regular Eastern Bloc magazines that don't have bolt hold open um, this leather sling I picked up from a friend that bought this from uh, he had thousands of them uh, he he gave me one and I think several of my other rifles have slings from him too uh, if anybody is interested in getting slings I can pass along that information and get you in contact with it uh, good dude good prices uh, that being said, let's go and check our action here. Uh, if you'll notice, I have a primary arms ACSS reticle 3X scope on here, and a RS Regulate 303M, and then I don't remember the uh, top mount. I apologize, I, I, I failed you in that. Uh, but it's whichever one works with ACOG style mounts. I remember that specifically. Uh, this setup works for my eyesight. Um, and it's, mag it's got magnification so I can see up close and it also works for my stigmatism. So I have no complaints. The rifle shoots accurately. I think you guys have seen the range videos uh, with me shooting this rifle. Uh, normally the SAR-1 rifles come out without the muzzle threaded you can see here this muzzle has been threaded uh, one of the interesting things is this is one of the few rifles other than the my Arsenal 106 FR that I obviously no longer have uh, due to unfortunate circumstances uh, this one isn't canon it's one of the few rifles that I've had other than my rifle dynamics guns that I've never had an issue with sights. Uh, the only major complaint that I could ever say about this rifle is that when I got it, it was in rough shape. Um, basically, the finish was gone. It was it was not bare metal, but the bluing or ph phosphate or whatever they use on these guns was basically worn off. Um, I'm of the mind that. These guns are meant to be used as tools. Uh, I basically barbecue painted, barbecue rattle can painted this gun. Um, as you can see, the top cover, the paint has worn off. It's, uh, it's about time for a new paint job. Uh, but like I said, this gun has been very has been faithful. I've never had an issue with ammunition or the gun jamming, or misfiring, or light primer strikes, or any of that sort of stuff. Knock on wood. So, as you can see, the older guns 
and this is just an observation, like the Chinese guns and the Romanian, like the GPs, like the GP Wasser 10s and the Romy Gs, stuff like that were really reliable, very dependable guns. I cannot say enough about how happy I am with this rifle. Uh, I ended up buying the threading kit from, what was the name of that place, uh, CNC Warrior. I think it was like $80, and then I used it for this rifle and then sold it to somebody else and basically didn't pay anything for it. Um, sold it for the same price, and I think they were local if I remember correctly, and just I used what I needed and I passed it on to the next guy. Uh, like I stated earlier in the video, I will roll in footage of, or photos rather, of the previous versions of this rifle. Uh, I know at one point I had that Ultimac rail on here. One upgrade in the future that I'd like to do, this is the only AK that I own currently that doesn't have a widened rear sight notch. Um, I may leave this one alone because it's basically in original condition other than the furniture, but uh, it would be easier for me to pick up. This is probably the one gun that I would pick up first and run out the door with if I needed to use it. Um, it's, like I said, it's been 100% reliable and it just runs. I will probably keep this rifle forever and use it until I can't use it anymore. Um, so far, uh, I've got a target back here on my refrigerator that I shot with this open sights at 25 yards and with no glasses, which was crazy. I was like, ah, I'm not going to hit it. You know, this isn't going to go well. And you'd be surprised. I was very shocked at how well this gun shot. So with that being said, I think I'll cut this video off fairly quickly. I've been talking here for 12 minutes and running my gob, so I will roll in some photos and we'll leave it at that. Um, I'll show you guys real quick as best I can up close on the rifle itself. Uh, if you guys want more photos of it, these guns can still be found for a reasonable price. Um, now they're up to... Basically, I think that last one, last couple ones I saw were like eight, between six and eight hundred dollars, about the same as a as a new Glosser. Um, one of these days, I probably will have this gun refinished, um, but it it'll be quite some time. It'll probably be around the time that it needs a barrel change. That's gonna be a while because I have no idea how many rounds have been in through this rifle. But I know it's been quite a few, and I will continue to pump rounds through it until it finally just basically loses accuracy and has nothing but a sewer pipe down front. Um, that being said, I hope you guys don't mind I'm pointed at you so you can see the sights and its front sight position. Um, but anyway, thank you guys for watching my videos. Uh, I really appreciate the this currently the 17 subscribers that I have. Uh, I'd like to continue to build this channel and hopefully one day be able to actually get I don't like the idea of asking for funding through Patreon I think that we get a better review when things are actually purchased with my own personal money so that way it eliminates the possibility of shilling and there's no question about my opinion of the item that being said there's quite a few YouTube channels on YouTube that are very reasonable, very educated, and have accurate reviews of products that do use Patreon. Uh, that's not a that's not a diss on them in any way, shape, or form. It's just my, one man's opinion. Um, that being said, you guys have a good evening, and I hope to see you again here on the channel. Thanks and good night.